Well then, welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 58. We're going to have an awkward pause while I wait for confirmation that this is live. I'm just going to drink some more coffee. There we go. Confirmation. We are live. So, accountability. If you have to be held accountable, you don't care about it. Now, I know, let's take those off because they're uh, going to distract you a lot. If you have to be held accountable, you don't care about it. And as a bold statement, and a lot of people are going to be uncomfortable hearing that. They're not going to like that. Possibly even want to bite back and comment and tell me how I'm wrong and all that kind of stuff. But just stick with me for a minute on this, okay? Particularly if you're a coach, because I think this will this will possibly change your way of thinking. Because I used to think accountability was a massively important part of being a coach and building it into programs was really important for me. But my thoughts around this have changed quite a lot over the last year or so. So you cannot force someone to do something that they don't want to do. As a coach, instead of holding people accountable, I think we're actually better off helping them find what they really want and then guiding them down a path towards it. It should never, ever be a coach's job to make someone do something that they don't want to do. You know, if, if you can't do it yourself, how can you expect someone else to force you to do it? OK, if you continually put off doing something, even if you've set a very clear goal, you, you know, you've done all the prep, you understand your why, you've got all the emo emotional charge behind it, all that kind of stuff, and you know what needs to be done, and you're still not doing it, it usually comes down to two things. One, fear, or two, you'd just rather be doing something else more enjoyable. And it's worth analyzing the alternative action and considering if it's something that you are actually doing to cover fear, or if it's something you're doing simply because you'd rather just do that instead. So if I give you an example, let's say we've got two people who both have a goal of losing weight and they've decided that as part of the process, they're going to go to the gym at six o'clock every day, but it's Monday and they've missed their early morning gym session. Both of them have slept in. First person slept in because she wanted to sleep. She would rather have slept than gone to the gym. And the second one, slept in because she feels uncomfortable going to the gym the night before she started to get the feelings the fear that all started to creep in neither of those people can be forced by a coach person one just has something else you'd rather do in this case sleep and person two is fearful and if you push against fear it pushes back so instead of using force or mindlessly trying to keep people accountable, we could instead explore what it would take to go past the fear or alternatively find a solution that allows people to do what they want to do while still making progress towards their goal. Sometimes we're going to have to do things we don't love, but the more that we can do what we do love, the better the results are going to be. I don't prescribe to the idea that we all have to struggle all the time. We all have to, you know, eat shit sandwiches because that's the way it is. And we have to hate what we're doing to reach the goal because the struggle makes it great and it makes you appreciate it more. I don't prescribe to that idea anymore. I did for a very, very, very long time. But that's not the way I believe that we should operate. Because if that's the case, what's the point? Why even have the goal? Because if the process is miserable, the end result will never be enough to make up for the suffering that you've endured. And as I said in a video a couple of weeks ago, suffering for the sake of suffering is stupid. If you have the option to do something else, you're going to take it. So if you feel like you need to be held accountable to get something done, then I'd have you question how much you really want it and how much of an impact it's actually going to have on your life. Are you fearful or would you rather just do something else? Because people who truly want something, they don't have to be told to do it. They don't have to be forced into it. They do it because they love it and they keep on loving it long after they've achieved whatever that initial goal was. 
because more often than not, if you love the process and you become focused on the process rather than the result, you're going to keep doing it. So when I train, I've trained for a long time now, um, over 10 years, probably pushing 15 years or so. I train because I want to train because I love the process of getting stronger. I don't set a strict outcome based training goal anymore. I used to have a training goal of like, right, let's get the deadlift to this much or let's lose this much weight or let's have a body fat percentage of this and let's do this, that and the other. But those kinds of goals get tied up in doing stuff I don't like doing. So I don't do it and I never achieve a goal unless I make myself really miserable just to get there, which is pointless. So instead, I'll have a clear picture of how I want to feel. And then I'll do things that give me those feelings. And then I'll keep doing them and tweaking them and moving towards that clear big picture, rather than a set in stone specific goal, because things change. But if you know where you're going, without that level of rigidity, then you're far more likely to get there. Because inflexibility leads to stress and it halts progress because for most people if they can't do it this way then they're not going to do it at all and if you've got one strict goal that has to be this way and you have to do it this way chances are you're not going to get there because things happen if you have the ability to to flow and to move and be free so that you can correct and shift as you go it's going to be far more enjoyable and far more beneficial you're going to learn along the way rather than being militant and being outcome obsessed obsession with an outcome is a big thing at the minute many people are results 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 that's all that matters but if you get outcome obsessed you miss all the pro uh, the progress along the way okay the process is progress the little things the enjoyable things the things that make life great you're going to miss them all because you're so focused in on that one outcome so next time you decide to set yourself a goal, consider if it's something that you need to be held accountable for. And if so, is that out of fear or is it simply because you'd rather be doing something else and then come at it from that angle with your coach, work around those things instead, because accountability ultimately is a losing game for both of you. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to see how you approach this, particularly if you're a coach. Do you agree with it? Do you disagree? What's your process with this? Um, and just let me know your thoughts. So that's everything for this week. Just drop in the comments. Let me know. I'll see you all very soon. Have a great Tuesday, guys.